Hello friends, welcome to Science With Me. My name is Dr. Erica with Rosie Research. I'm so excited that you're joining us in this Arduino gaming. We found some great games at University of Wyoming. They have an Arduino tutorial as well. So we are building some of their stuff and you can follow along and learn the coding as you go. Make sure if you wanna do some more stuff with us, you check us out at patreon.com slash Rosie Research. So let's grab out our Arduino board and our breadboard. All of these parts are gonna be in that Elegoo circuit that you guys had. So if you want to build this in real life, you will totally be able to, and we'll have a breadboard tutorial for that as well. So today we're gonna to make a little memory game for Simon Says, and we are gonna use some lights, and we are gonna use some push buttons to then sort of replay what the lights did. So we can use a red, and we can change this one to yellow and this one to green, and that will help us sort of remember the different colors instead of just having red, red, red. We'll also put some push buttons in here, and they will come right in, and make sure that your push buttons and your LEDs don't share any of this column so that they're not connected in any way. They need to have a little bit of space between them. And then another fun thing that we are going to add is a buzzer, and that will help us sort of listen to the sound so we can have a different tone on each of these which is pretty fun. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to wire in our ground rail and we'll color that one black and then we're going to use a bunch of resistors and go from our ground into our LEDs. I'm going to move these guys all down by one so that we can see the LEDs a little better. So the resistors go into the short leg of the LED. That's the leg that always is lower in terms of like current, so like going to ground for example, and this one would maybe be 5 volts and that would turn this LED on. If you put the higher voltage here and the lower voltage on the anode, then it won't turn on. So make sure you're using those short legs. Here you can kind of see it because it's like a leg out to the side is that long leg. So you're going to put a resistor on the short legs of all three LEDs, and we're also going to put a resistor on all three of the buttons. So we can pull out some resistors and we can put it on all three of these buttons right here. And you're going to go, I would go on the same side of the buttons each time, because the other side of the button we are going to wire in to 5 volts from the Arduino. So this side of the button that's not the resistor is going to go into five volts for all three of those. And of course, before we forget, we are going to add in our five volts into the circuit. That's something I love to forget about. And that will make sure that those buttons are powered up. The last thing that we're gonna need that goes to ground is gonna be this piezo buzzer. And just like the LEDs, there's a positive and a negative. So you wanna take the negative side and you can hook that one straight into ground as well. So now we need to wire these guys up into our Arduino because right now our Arduino is just giving power and it's not really doing anything that's Brainiac wise. So we're gonna take our resistor or our LEDs and we're gonna plug them into the board. So we can go into these pins and let's put red into three. We're gonna match up with the programming that the University of Wyoming sent out. And that puts the red in three and the yellow will go into four, and our green is gonna go into two. All right, and I like changing these colors so it makes it really clear what is going on. We're gonna do the same thing, we're gonna wire the buttons. It's gonna come off of the part that has the resistor, and now you can either pull it off of here up top, or you can pull it here down below. These terminals are connected, so that will work either way. I'm going to do it from down below because it'll keep this sort of a little bit more organized. So we'll start with the green and the green we'll put into pin 8 and then we'll do the red which is going to go into pin 9 and we'll color that one pink and then we'll do our yellow button and that one goes into pin 10. And we can double check that we have that going into the side with the resistor for each of these. Perfect. All right, and then we also need to wire up our piezo buzzer, which we can maybe come up through here, and we'll put that into pin 7. Let's color our piezo orange. All right, that is all we need to do in terms of wiring, and now we've got some programming to do. 
So in our code, we are going to switch from blocks coding to text coding. We'll hit continue. All of our patrons can grab this code at patreon.com slash rosy research, or you can also find these at, oops, at the University of Wyoming website. So we are going to delete what's here. And the first thing is we are going to define a whole bunch of variables. So these ones are going to control our LEDs and these ones, it's going to be on or off for those options. Then we've got, if there's no, no LED, the number of LEDs. So we have three LEDs. If you wanted to make this longer, you could do that. You'd have to write it into the code. You'd have to add a new LED here, a new choice here, change this number. Um, but it could be totally done in the code. That could be a great little practice assignment for you guys. Here are the pins that go into each LED and we can double check that those are right. So the green one goes into pin two, the red one goes into pin three, the yellow one goes into pin four. Makes it really easy to check this because we've got them color coded. And then we wanna check our buttons. The green one goes into pin eight, the red one goes into nine and the yellow goes into 10. And then we have our buzzer on seven. So if you actually found somebody's code and you wanted to wire up the project, you could look for something like this and then wire it accordingly. All right, so then the other thing that we can add in here is how many levels do you wanna complete? And how long, how long do you have before the program decides you don't know what to do and start over? So now we are going to make a couple more variables. This is going to sort of hold in its brain all of these little guys that it's done. And it can go up to 32, so it could have red, yellow, red, red, green, yellow, green, green, red. And that would be, I don't know how many I just said, but it's less than 32, so this can hold it. So this is the game board's memory, and it's gonna test the game board's memory against yours. You're probably not going to get to 32. This here is going to check and count up the round. So are you on round one or round two? How far are you? And once you're bigger than 32, that's gonna be a problem for our game board, but that's gonna be really difficult. This has our levels to complete, um, and you can change this if you want to do more levels. If you find it's like 10 so easy, you can do that. All right, so now we need to set up our program in our void setup, and we are going to put in all of our pin modes. So our buttons are gonna be these inputs right here. Our LEDs are gonna be outputs so that it can turn them on. And then we also need our buzzer, which is going to also be an output. All right, and then if we wanted to do something to make sure that the whole program is working, we could do that maybe right after we declare this. So the University of Wyoming has this great little way to do that. They do plain their winner. And so you can call this, and then you'll notice though this sort of has, it calls some other little tiny programs. So this is a miniature program that we can call up here, and then we'll write those other programs down below as well. So first we will play our winner up here, and that's going to call this little program. So if we didn't have a program here, the computer would be like, oh, you want me to go do this item, but that doesn't exist. So now it exists. But of course, it doesn't quite exist because we have some things that are in here, like the winner sound, that we need to also tell it what to do. So the code for the winner sound, which is gonna be a fun little sound that sort of goes up and down, is right here we've got sort of, we're gonna to toggle that buzzer and it's gonna go up and down sort of like a little siren type of a sound. Now if we have a winner sound, we might as well have a loser sound as well. And that play loser sound could be the same thing. It's sort of like its own little booklet that gets called. And we could do this where it sort of just buzzes at you and it's no fun. All right, so now we are ready. We're all set up. And over to here, we are going to add in our loop. All right, I'm gonna give myself a whole bunch of space. These are sort of like the extra little tidbits of code that give our Arduino more knowledge. And this is the stuff that we're really running through, but a lot of the time it calls that and it has to keep looking at it, sort of its school notes or its cliff notes on how to do something. And it will look down and, oh, how do I play the loser? Oh, this is my cliff notes. So our void loop is actually kind of short. So we're gonna turn all the LEDs on. We're gonna wait, we'll turn them all off. 
we're gonna wait and then we're going to start to play our memory game and then we're gonna get tones based on what happens so this looks like it has everything we need because we're like oh let's play the game memory let's play the winner and the play the loser now we have our cliff notes for the winner and the loser but we don't have a cliff note for play memory so Arduino's gonna get here and be like I don't know how to play memory and we have to teach it how to play memory so we do that through its own little cliff notes and that is called play memory and this is gonna be zero or one like if you got it right it's gonna be a one and if you got it wrong it's gonna be a zero and so what it'll do is it'll randomly choose which one of these lights to turn on and it's going to set this game to the beginning and then as long as you're less than your levels to complete now we put that up here at 10 but you could increase that if you would like to but as long as you're less than that we're going to add one of these lights and you'll notice this is an add to moves we're gonna to have to figure out how to write that into our code and then we're going to play back the current game board and we're gonna wait for our buttons to come in so we're gonna wait for this little guy so play moves is like all of the old stuff add to moves is the new one and then we're gonna wait for our player to add that all in so let's first add our add to moves cliff notes and we can paste that in again this code is from the University of Wyoming and so this is how we are adding to those moves we're gonna add a new button it's gonna be a random choice between zero and the number of LEDs we have so that gives us at least one of these three guys is gonna happen and then we're gonna store that information into our game board and once we add our move then we wanted to play our moves which is another set of cliff notes and this is gonna play all the stuff that's been stored in its memory so we added this new one and then this is sort of the tail end if you're only doing one we only have this once you have two buttons you have to press then we've got all of these guys in there all right so we've done a lot with the computer and making the computer choose what order it's going to go in and then remember what order it's going in so it can compare our button choices we haven't sort of lit up anything and we are going to write a little cliff notes with the leds so here is our cliff notes to light our leds and that's if you know that if it the choice happens for it to be red then we're going to write it high otherwise we're gonna write that one low so if it had been on we're gonna make sure we turn it off and the same thing will happen for all of these if we choose yellow let's make sure that it's on and if not let's make sure that it's off so now we need to write a few more cliff notes and that is gonna be for our buttons and the first thing we're gonna to want to do is we want to wait for that button to be pressed so we need to wait give ourselves some time after we've played this to wait for this button to be pressed otherwise the computer is going to be like oh nope you didn't know it and continue on and tell you that you lost and we we all need a little bit of time to start putting that process back in so this is going to wait for those buttons and it's going to give you a certain amount of time and that entry time limit we set above we have it as three and a half seconds right now and this will check and wait for that time and it'll see if you've pressed a button during that time all right and then if you have then you're gonna play the button that the user just pressed so if you press red let's say it's gonna light up red and it will also play the little tone that goes with red if you press yellow it'll light up yellow and do that tone so that you'll get the visual and audio feedback as you put it in the same way as when the computer puts it out to you so now that we've waited for the buttons if we press the buttons here's our code for if we press the buttons it's actually gonna create a string of sort of zeros and ones and red zeros and ones and green zeros and ones and yellows and then we can look at what position did you put all of these by sort of looking at those strings and we can compare that to what it has made for what it played all right so now we have the computer it has put out its stuff we have t waiting for input for us we put in our input it's remembering that it can compare it we can play the winner and the loser we also have this little buzzer though and we wanted to play different tones for each color of light so let's give ourselves some cliff notes for that and so the first one will be our toner and that tone is gonna sort of turn on a certain LED and depending on if it's red or green or yellow we're gonna play a different tone so here's the different tones if you hate the tones 
that it's making, you could change these three values right here and make them tones that you liked. All right, and then our last little bit is going to be playing that buzzer sound. Um, and that is that we're gonna choose how long it plays and how long we've been playing for. It'll be kind of exciting, it'll add a little bit extra to this. All right, so we have all of our code in here. And again, you can get that at the University of Wyoming if you look up their Arduino memory game. You can also get it for us at patreon.com slash rosyresearch. So now we can close our code and we can start our simulation. I'm gonna turn my computer volume down a little bit and then we are going to start this. Here is our winner and then we have to press that and it's gonna remember, and you'll notice it plays yellow and then green. And some of this shakiness is just Tinkercad trying to simulate it. Oh, and see, now it knew that I did something wrong and it gave me the loser sound and now it's ready to play again. And we can stop that simulation and start it again. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We will have a breadboard circuit tutorial of wiring this up on the breadboard and plopping that code onto our Arduino so that you guys can play this memory game at home. And I hope you enjoyed this and check out our other Arduino games. Have a great one. Bye friends.